Will you hurt me again? You might, but no one else knows what I like. Underneath is still a friend. Many lifetimes now you've been. Say I've had enough. My mind may change even when made up. 'Cause every day's a new day for love. But living in magic can be tragic. I'm love's junkie. I'm love's addict, and you'd be. If you ever had it, I got a real bad, a real bad habit. You stole the light right from my eyes. Shut it up like fireflies. Start the day salutation and smile, then work your way to tribulation and trial. Say I've had enough. My mind may change even when made up. 'Cause every day's a new day for love. But living in magic can be tragic. I'm love's junkie. I'm love's addict. If you ever had it, I've got a real bad, a real bad habit. Believing in magic can be tragic. I'm love's junkie, I'm love's addict, and you'd be too if you ever had it. I've got a real bad, a real bad habit. Trust me, I 
know she hears it, but you're the only you today. Could be the last you know. Help is how you ought to go. No pain could ever buy your soul. Yeah. 
I'm Aisha Jaffer. We're at the Current Studios with Sunny Moore. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Now, you had like a wild year. You've been on the Kelly Clarkson show, the Jimmy Kimmel show, the Late Show with Stephen Colbert, and like everything in between. And I'm just wondering, like, as like a heat check, how are you just feeling? I feel all right. <laughs> that's That's great. I mean, you have quite a story, and this is like a short and condensed uh kind of summary you know playing music at a young age then falling into the crowd at venice beach at the hen house studios and then i always think it's interesting this part for emerging artists to kind of know this part of the story of like how did you end up uh finding new west or how did they end up finding you in this journey in music i think um probably just from kind of having press with like different americana sites and stuff with the first two albums I did with Hen House I think they were interested like after Simple Syrup album they emailed my manager just kind of talking about maybe doing the record or doing the next record and then here you are and there's so much going on and you've you've self-made this this whole journey and it's been quite a journey and I have to say the Anarchist Gospel is like maybe one of the best album titles I've heard to date. Truly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I love I love knowing the history though that like your punk kid, you had um the best band name ever, Anus Anus uh Kings. Kings. Anus Kings. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say it several times because I because it's part of your history. Anus Kings in LA, right? You did this yeah. this group and it was a duo. Is yeah. It right? Well, it was a trio too at a certain point. Like sometimes we had a drummer, sometimes, but it was hard to to keep it going because the drummer moved to New York, and then Anna's Kings kind of stopped after that. Yeah, but, but punk has always kind of been in your life, something important in your life. But then also, it, right, like with gospel too, like going to the church and being drawn to the music. So putting this together. Uh, it makes a lot of sense in the title. Well, I don't know about <laughs> making SIDS. <laughs> but God, I mean, I like gospel. I, I Well, I didn't mean it like... I meant it because it, it was kind of has like a lot of choir singing. But I guess some of... I think some of them, the songs are kind of gospel-like. But... Yeah, I still listen to I still listen to a lot of gospel actually. I like the chords. And I like the beat like a lot. lot and a lot of good bass lines are the best bass lines are in gospel music. I also like um people just kind of like screaming. Like sometimes you get that. I guess a lot of things I like about some hardcore bands I like about gospel music. Yeah, the parallel. The really right. like obnoxious gospel is very similar. Like especially when it's like it gets like it gets kind of like that. That's true. <laughs> I didn't even think about it that way. Well, and I, I heard I heard in another interview, and I thought this was uh, so interesting that you said self love is anarchy, and I'm just curious if you could kind of expand on that sentiment and maybe how that's incorporated into the anarchist gospel. Well, not self-love, just love, I think. Yeah. But I guess, well, I guess maybe even self-love, but I think anarchy is love because it's like of, it's a type of trust, I think. I think like a lot of people associate the word anarchy with like chaos or something instead of just like no government. And I feel like people, it's weird, like to feel like you need to be governed is kind of saying you don't trust yourself or other people and I don't get that part of the fear of anarchy because I just think we're all even right now mostly it seems like most people except for like extremely rich people we're all like what's going why aren't they helping it like it seems like we're already like saying that we're this group of people and they're there's some completely different people so we're already like knowing that they're over here and we're over here. So I feel like why wouldn't, we're disappointed with the government constantly forever. Like it's been like that forever. So it just is weird when people are like, but we need them. But it's like they're not, haven't done anything that we want them to do. And voting doesn't really seem to change anything. And it, so I feel like it's like a fear thing. I feel like love would be like, 
maybe we don't need maybe we just need each other and to just like take care of each other like it might be more stable for us to just like because i don't even know anybody that has health insurance i don't know anybody that can see a doctor like it just seems like at this point why don't we just maybe we could get somebody that is technically a doctor to agree to help people like i like i feel like we're already at that point where it's like we might as well try to just take care of each other because it's just not likely that we can get the basic stuff that we need as people anymore yeah so love is anarchy in a sense if you yeah yeah because then even the other points of like but what if something happens and you need to call the police and blah 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 that doesn't even really work if you've ever been in an emergency where you did actually need the police even that doesn't actually come through it at the right time like nothing that is sub- that they're supposed to be doing is actually working well. So I don't even get that. You'd be better off calling somebody you know if there was like an emergency where you need, I don't know. So that's more, I feel like the love part, it's like commu- like actually being a community for each other is what I think of as anarchy. Yeah, and in this record too, I mean, you've, you've been through a lot. You moved, you went through a breakup, you lost a loved one, and you can kind of hear that raw energy uh, in the album. And when you talk about love is anarchy, is that kind of a through line to what you're conveying in this record? Mm, I don't... It's like all well, <laughs> love is in anarchy, but anarchy is love. Yes. Love is a lot of things, I think. Yeah. Love, maybe like... Because some other stuff could be called love, too, I guess. I don't know what love is. I'm not good at that. Well, I know, I know, like, unromantic love. I'm good at that kind of love. Yeah. Like, I love people and stuff and my friends, but the other kind of love, I don't know. Look, you're not alone on that one. <laughs> yeah, I don't care for that one. Well, we're playing a song here on The Current. We're thrashing your song, No Reason. And I I hear like some frustration in that track. Can you explain like the inspiration behind that one? I think just like, like inner, just duality and just kind of being, like being good and bad at the same time and like having to choose sometimes between the two. Or even trying to restrain one side of yourself to be what you think is the better version or something. And just like, because even like when, just like with the breakup and then even my dad passing away and stuff, I felt like there was a lot of, I felt like I was dealing with that, just trying to like not to drink a lot and then feeling like, I'll, just feeling like just completely relapsing on everything at certain points just and then feeling like it was justified. Like if I'm this sad, I can just do whatever I want. And then that I feel like can be like, cause I know that's not even right. So I feel like there's just a fight like, nah, maybe you should try to be healthy. Cause that's not gonna, that's gonna make everything worse really. Like just knowing when things are wrong and you're just doing them anyway, it's kind of like no reason is kind of like about that. When you're just fighting with yourself because you know the right thing, but you it doesn't feel right, I guess. It's like an internal tug of war. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I wanted to talk about your style of playing too, because it's so unique. And I heard somewhere that your finger picking was kind of like from watching a family friend play the banjo and your uncle play upright bass is that how that kind of yeah evolved yeah kind of yeah i think because i cause i never saw anyone strumming really until later but even even besides them i think it was also like i remember be, being influenced by um Dave Rawlings and Gillian Welch because like I don't know why I feel like I remember like Oh Brother coming out that movie coming out and then everybody was really obsessed with them for a while like when that movie came out just and then my mom was listening to their record a lot the Revelator record and then I I couldn't really tell what was banjo and what wasn't banjo and I think I was confused about a lot of stuff for a while when I was a kid. 
like what sounds were supposed to come out of what instrument, I guess. Because even the bass thing, I didn't even know. I feel like I never heard in bow for a long time. So even that, I remember being shocking. Like, oh, that's a different sound that that instrument can make. Like, I didn't really hear a lot of different stuff live. So it's kind of like what you heard and what you watched, you kind of put to the guitar and, and yeah. made your own style. And I thought I thought the soundtrack of Old Brother were out there was that's guitar, all guitar. Yeah. So I just thought that these are natural guitar sounds. And you just made them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. I thought I was making country music, though. There's a lot of weird stuff going on at first when I, when I was playing at first. Yeah, and I, I bet everybody does when they're experimenting. It's it's a it's a strange world, and I heard also, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but in in Anus Kings, you you guys wanted a singer, right? You didn't want to sing. Yeah, we never had a singer. Nobody wanted to be in Anus Kings for some reason. I don't know why. Rude! It's the best band name ever. Maybe they <laughs> just they didn't get it. I don't know. <laughs> but then you got ended up singing, and you've you're still singing, and I, I think your voice is phenomenal. But from Thank but it's not something you love to do, is that right? Or you are you now loving it more? I don't I don't like singing, but I like the ch like trying to write something to sing, I guess, or trying to figure out how to be comfortable. I like lyrics, so I guess I like. I would like to have a singer though. Still, I was gonna ask or that. Or just if to play with somebody else, and because I don't, I don't get the breathing of it. I guess. I guess there, like some people are better. It's like I know there's like a there's a trick to the breathing thing. Like you're fooling all of us. I it feel like great. I run out of breath or something. <laughs> mm. There's like things that they do. That's why people take. They have like an instructor or something there's like breathing things that they do and then like there's stuff singers don't do like i'm not i'm never gonna quit smoking you know what I mean? like there's stuff it's like, it's like if i really was into it i wouldn't i'm just not gonna do that for that and that's like a that would just suck like i would be so like just to sing you know there's like thing. there's people that are like i won't cut my nails to play guitar Mm. that's like me saying I won't quit smoking to sing you know it's like mm -hmm. it's because you don't really care about it so I'm thinking I'd rather be more like Tom Waits that's why I'm hoping that my voice gets deeper every year until you can't even hear it you just want it to be then I'll just growl <laughs> I mean that's that kind of the tight. punk vibes yeah or something maybe it wouldn't I could play in a cigar bar and just live there <laughs> I love uh, these dreams. Yeah. They're a beautiful. I like the <laughs> visuals of these dreams. You picked up a cigar box too recently, I think. Oh, I have two. What? I have okay. two cigar box guitars. Are now. we going to hear that like on the next record? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I hope it doesn't break. It's fragile. Yeah, it looks fragile. I recorded a demo with it though. Ah, so maybe. That's exciting. Well, you know, speaking of kind of like, we were talking about like, you know, like the weird experimental world of music. And I, I found that you you picked up a guitar at seven, but also at that age, you kind of discovered Ween. And I know there's a Ween cover on this record. Yeah. And I'm just like, did Ween inspire it all? Or what inspired you to pick up that guitar? No, Ween. <laughs> uh, I think it's definitely just my mom and my stepdad in his band because they were always around so i think it was because and even the weird guy that plays banjo he was like my stepdad's friend that was always around like i think just like seeing people play stuff and but my mom says it was from rocky horror picture show oh wow because she said that i asked i asked for a guitar like earlier watching that or something and I and I also I should ask her why she's she was a I'm not gonna say she was a, a bad mom or anything. I just there's certain stuff I wouldn't really be watching with a little kid or whatever. But then then she got me one eventually when I was seven. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> but I think but there was also this guy that was in my stepdad's band. You would always be around, or we would go to his house and he had a bunch of guitars and he had like. 
because he had like a little home. He did all the recording, so he had all kinds of stuff at his house. So I think he's just seeing it. Because there's a lot of stuff like if if you show a kid like enough, like, I don't know, like if they're around like dirt bikes or something, they're going to do it. I think it's like kind of like that. Yeah, just being in your environment. Yeah. What kind of band was it that they, they played? It's called Holtz Claw. Nice. And you could still, they're still making records. And you can find it on YouTube. Holtz, oh, wow. Holtz Claw. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's they cool. They got a, I would say maybe it's kind of like Ween. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. They have, I don't know what I'm allowed to say on here. Oh, right, whatever. We can edit everything. <laughs> my favorite, well, my favorite song by Holtz Claw is called Chili and Pussy. Nice. And it's about eating both wherever you want. Oh, I love, I love that. Look, we said Ain't It Kings a bunch of times. It's All fine. Right. <laughs> um, well, okay. That's that's cool. And maybe we, I mean, Ween future dream collaboration or Holtz Claw dream collaboration yeah. in the future. Which kind of brings me to your record because there are a lot of great artists on your record along with you, like Allison Russell and Jim James, David Rawlings, and I see Joe on their record, lots of good Nashvillians. So I'm just wondering, was it was it when you were in Nashville that you got connected with all of these people or how did that all come together? Jim James I met in LA and Allison Russell I met at Newport Folk Festival and then we have played one show or something and then I kind of asked about it like a like a year or two before recording and then Dave Rawlings that was through New West because at first they, he we were kind of talking about asking him to produce the whole album so at first it wasn't like for him to play on it I was thinking to produce it because that was kind of like New West's like list of possible producers or something so I thought but then I was like I don't I don't know I just wanted to see if he would play on it so he was cool about it and then the other people is they're all like I guess like um the Nashville like the bomb shelter studio that's kind of like the main band that they use for most of the albums I think like everybody else playing on it, except for Chris and Micah, who I guess they they sent their stuff from California. They just sent their tracks from California. Oh, okay. And then the rest of the band, that's like the bomb shelter band, really. One of the things I know about you, too, is that you, you kind of use your power. You use your power for good. I know you helped start Food Not Bombs downtown in L.A., but in Chattanooga now, I saw you were a mentor for Girls Rock Camp. Oh, yeah. And I was just curious yeah. about, like, if you could explain Girls Rock Camp and your experience doing that. Um, Girls Rock Camp, they, I think they have them, like, every, like all over the country, and it's, like, um, a summer, like, a day camp. For I think ten to seventeen year olds, and it's like I want to say fem rock camp because there are like some trans kids and stuff and non-binary kids, and they um like they spend the first half of the day doing whatever instrument instruction class and then. The second half, they're like in their band. So they all form a band at the camp and they're working on a song every day. And then at the end of the camp, then they have to perform. And then they have like different workshops and different like, there's like usually bands coming in and playing every day, like a different band will come play. So my band, I was a, a guitar instructor and a band mentor. And their band was called Jump Scare. And they wrote a song about AI and like the horrors of the internet. <laughs> it was like just like weirdly like like really hardcore for like I think they were like all twelve. And it was like really extreme. It was tight. Yeah. It was tight, but I was like, dang, like they were like talking about getting scammed, like all the things that go wrong with the internet and then 
then they did the last part of the song they were like kanye west canceled kim k canceled like they're just naming all i was like wow this song this is crazy <laughs> and they played i thought they were the best band at the whole sh- at the whole show but I guess probably everybody thought their band was the best, but I thought my, I was like, my band's this song is so that they're speaking about the times, but there was some other cool bands, but it was like exhausting though. Yeah, I would do it again, but I think I wouldn't do both. The, like I think I would do either one or the other, like the mentor or the other one. Yeah, because it was like it was like we would get there at eight a.m. until five. And it was like, I guess I never knew that they need a lot of attention and they're very, like, I was, like, tired. Yeah. But already adding <laughs> to your community, though, even though you're tired, you know, really helping them out and stuff. And I think that's really cool. I kind of want to hear the song, too. <laughs> I have a video of it. Okay. I recorded some of it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, before I let you go, Sunny War, is there anything else you want our listeners to know? Nope. Perfect. Well, thank you. I love you. Ah! <laughs> thank you so much for hanging out with us here today at the current thanks for having me here anarchist gospel is out now check it out the current is public media made possible thanks to member support